2015 Max S trailer. Um, it has a Norcold, a Norcold 3160 um, three-way fridge in it. While we were on our last trip, um, we started having trouble with the um, with this refrigerator. Um, it stopped getting cold. Um, did some troubleshooting and found that it worked just fine on gas. It worked just fine on uh, 12 volts, but when trying to run it from 120 volts, um, it wouldn't work. So I troubleshooted it and ran it all down, and it turns out that uh, this is the thermostat and gas control um, for that refrigerator. I'll show you how this works really quick. In that fridge, there's uh, three heaters. One is a 12 volt heater that's on all the time. If you flip your um, refrigerator to 12 volts, that heater will come on and the refrigerator will cool. This refrigerator um, cools by heat. It's kind of odd, we're not gonna get into that, but there's a 12 volt heater. There's also a uh, gas flame heater in here, um, basically propane. Um, you turn it on and it gets heat and uh, the fridge was working on that also on gas. But there's also a third heater in here, 120 volt heater, that wasn't working. Um, basically how the circuit is, it's really pretty straightforward. You have 120 volts coming in. It goes through that selector switch, you know, the one that says 12 volts, um, gas or uh, uh, 120 volt you know, line, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it comes through that switch and then it, it goes to this thermostat, these two uh, connectors right here, um, little switch, and then runs to ground or runs to the heater. So that's the circuit. It goes 120 volts in through the selector switch, through the thermostat, and to the heater. How this thermostat works, it's, uh, it's got three things of importance on it. One, it's got a gas valve. Um, two, it's got a, a thermostat switch. And three, it's got a temperature sensor. Um, this temperature sensor, what this tube is basically it's a, it's not, it looks like a wire, but it's not. It's a hollow tube and it's full of liquid. And this hollow tube is sealed at the end. And um, when liquids get cold, they shrink. When liquids get hot, they expand. And so this liquid, this is basically a sensor. The end of this goes down in your, against the um, cooling fins. And when that, uh, when that cooling fin gets cool enough, the liquid in here shrinks and there's a little diaphragm here and it um, uh, moves this diaphragm in and out depending on the temperature of the end of this probe. Um, this is the adjustment that you see on the front. And so that basically turns on and off the gas if you're running on gas and it turns on and off the uh, 120 volts if you're running for 120 volts. 
in my, uh, this is the new sensor. I bought it from a guy called the Norcold guy. You can find him online if you just Google the Norcold guy. Um, he's great with these parts. He's really, um, really knowledgeable on these guys and sells, um, like his company sells this stuff. So we're going to replace this today. Um, in my situation, these two contacts, no matter what position you put the thermostat in, they don't make contact anymore. They're uh, pitted or burned out or they're stuck or something in the one that's in the trailer. So we're going to go out to the trailer and we're going to put, we're going to take out that bad one and put this one in. Pretty simple process. Thought you might want to see it. So let's head out there and I'll show you what the original one looks like and how we're going to put this one in. Okay, so here we are in the trailer. I have my uh, Dometic stove um, tipped up just so that we can get access to it. Um, there is the uh, um, thermostat, there's the control, and if you look in here, here's the sensor line going, um, they've got a little hole right back here um, that goes down, mounts onto the fins down there, and the, the thermostat is right here. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to take this line off. This is the gas line that feeds in. I'm going to take this line off. This is the gas line that runs to the burner. Um, this is the uh, pilot pitot. Um, this is the lighter um, um, knob. And that's the line that, and that's the line, this lighter knob, that's the line that runs down. So we're going to disconnect this, 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 and this, and uh, take these two screws off and replace this. So um, I'm not going to pull wrenches out here and show you that. It's pretty straightforward. It's just the input line, the output lines, and these two screws. And then this guy lifts out, and you just pull that sensor out. So let's get out okay, of for your own safety before you start working on this guy. You need to unplug from street power. Don't want to get shocked. Next thing you want to do, you want to turn your gas off. Don't want to have any gas leaks. And in the trailer, um, this fitting and this fitting are just an open end wrench, 5 8 inch. Let's take okay, so here we are. I have the gas supply line is loose. The line to the uh, burner is loose. This is the sensor that uh, goes down to the burner that lets the refrigerator know that the burner is still lit. Turns the gas off if the pilot light goes out, that kind of business. So that guy's off. Next thing you need to do is, it's kind of hard, but you're gonna pull that, pull the control knob off. And then there are two screws on the back of this that hold this in the cabinet. We can take that whole assembly out. Let's get at it. Okay, now that I've got those lines off, I've got this tipped up a little bit. I can get to the two 120 volt lines here that run the, um, that run the uh, 120 volt heater. We'll take those off and then this guy, um, take those off and then pull the sensor out of the fridge. Let's get it in the back of the fridge. There are two of these clips like this and that's that sensor right there and it clips onto that second fin. So we're gonna, we've got those clips off. We'll now uh, pull that guy out. You can see up top, it just is in a hole and you can just you can just lift it. And just pull it out, just like that. All right, that sensor's the uh, thermostat's ready to come out. Let's go take it out. Okay, here the, here's the assembly. It's all out. Um, what we're going to do. Is we're going to leave this to all together. I'm not going to mess with it. We're going to unscrew it from here and unscrew this fitting. And we're going to put them into this guy. Now I know a lot of you are in love with Teflon tape, but this is not a place for Teflon tape. These are um, compression fittings. 
you see that there's no tape on there there's no goop on there there's no nothing it doesn't require it so the output and the input are compression fittings but on the edges here if you look they have some pipe joint compound just a little bit not much you don't want to get pipe joint compound into the valve assembly but just a little bit on the threads on each side of this um, no teflon tape pipe joint compound is what you want to use here and here um, so let's get okay out. so we're going to talk to you about how i knew that my old this is the old one this is a new one how the old one was bad um, i've got a meter here that's measuring uh, continuity when i put these two together it shows it's contacted so th both of these now are set in their coldest setting so that the heater should be on right it's the refrigerator sensors is warm so it's thinking that um, it should be on. The new one, hear that? I've got continuity between the two sensors. This guy, nothing. So this guy is trying to tell the heater to come on, as it should be. And this guy, nothing. So that switch that's inside there is bad. So. What we're going to do is spin this guy off, spin this assembly off, and put it on there just like it is now. Okay, we have the gas input line fitting taken off and the output assembly taken off. Um, there's the goop that they put on. It's a pipe joint thread, so I'm going to clean this off and apply new stuff. This is the stuff that they're recommending. This is um, T2 pipe thread sealant. Um, made by a company called Rector Seal. Um, just a little bit, not much, but we'll go ahead and show you that um, after I get these cleaned up. Okay, with those fittings off, I took a uh, paper towel and a little wire brush and cleaned those off. In working here, clean is everything. Clean is everything. If you get the, even the slightest little bit of muck, either um, the uh, pipe sealant in there or some grit or something the burner um, down there the propane burner is got very small little orifices in it and you can get those plugged up really easy so keep this clean and uh, we're now going to apply just a little bit of compound not much at all in fact I take just a little bit on my finger like that that's more than enough. And don't get any in the end. You're just gonna put it just around, just around on the threads, just a little bit. And I'm gonna clean the end of it off so none gets in there. See how the small amount I've got? That's all it takes. So I'm gonna do that to both this end and that end, and we're gonna put it into the new unit and uh, then be ready to put it in the trailer back in a bit okay so there we are completely reassembled um tight um uh hard to explain i don't have a torque wrench um that'll measure what you want but you want these pretty tight not uh, strip them out tight but really tight um tight on here and tight on here and i just put that in the vise and put my wrench on that and tightened them up need to be aligned so that your um, your thermostat knob and the uh, starter are both um, pointed in the same direction <coughs> it's ready to go out in the um, end of the trailer let's go do that um, but before we go I am a really big fan of finding out uh, not that something is broken, but why it broke. So let's take this switch assembly off and take a look at what's inside here and why it may have failed in the first place. So pretty straightforward. There's a Phillips screw here and a straight blade here. So we're gonna take that screw off. off okay we have that switch assembly off the gas valve assembly um, we're going to go ahead and take these clips off you can see this is just a switch 
um, I want to get in there and find out what's going on with it. Okay, here we've got the uh, top assembly off and a little contacts in here. It's too small to see. I don't have a macro lens here, but when I take a magnifying glass and I look in there, those little contacts are pitted and uh, just, um, just worn out, just like any switch gets after 100,000 cycles or so. Anyway, um, that was just informational. Um, and we'll head out to the trailer and put this guy back in. Okay, here we are back in the trailer. Pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to put this back in in the exact opposite position. I'm going to put those in, put the electrical contacts on this side, put the, uh, the uh, pilot sensor wires on this side, connect the lines up, and then we'll test. Excellent. Okay, we're getting close. I have the uh, pilot sensor connected. I have the uh, burner line connected, the output. I have the input connected. Those need to be um, fairly tight. Again, don't strip them out, but fairly tight. Um, the next thing I'm going to do just before I start testing this guy is I'm going to put a couple of drops of soap here, 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 and here. All four of the connections that I loosened, I'm going to put some soap on. I might put some soap around the other guys too and watch for bubbles. Um, that's a great way to tell if you've got a leak or not. And remember, you don't want any gas leaks. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and, and run this sensor back in the hole back there. Leave the excess uh, coiled right in the in this direction. Put some new tape down on it to hold it. Um, these clips back in the fridge. So let's get at it. Okay, we've got it all back in. We've got those clips back in the back. You can't see them, but that sensor is back in the exact same place it was before. Um, the original, this is the excess of that tube. When you're putting this this tube in, remember we talked about it, it's a little tube full of liquid, the sensor down there. Don't kink it, don't twist it. Um, and also, originally they didn't have this tied down, it was just bouncing here, so you can see I put a piece of tape um, over it just to keep it from uh, vibrating against itself. But otherwise the installation is just as it was before. So now we're going to do test. Um, you have to test both 120 volts and propane. So I'm going to do, I'm going to test to make sure I've got no leaks first. I'm going to turn on my propane and see if I can get the propane burner to start. And we'll see, bring the temperature of the fridge down and see that it stabilizes according to uh, what temperature I set the knob. Then we're going to do the exact same thing with the electrical. If they both work, then we'll call it good. But that testing is going to take several hours. You know, these refrigerators take a while to get, to get down to temperature. So we're going to let you go. Um, thanks for joining me and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.